blowing a blizzard with pea soup drift, which combined with the damp and mist make the day one of the bleakest I've ever experienced. During the morning, small ice lumps and gravel were blown by the wind, cutting the face and making it nigh impossible to move about. Frank Hurley, photographer. After 497 days, the 28 men of Ernest Shackleton's polar expedition had finally reached land. But to return from such a remote and desolate spot would demand almost superhuman effort. According to legend, Sir Ernest Shackleton placed the now famous ad. Men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return doubtful, honour and recognition in case of success, Ernest Shackleton. My grandfather, Colonel Audley's, was always looking for an opportunity to do something exceptional. And such an ad would have been catnip to my grandfather. He couldn't resist it. Chippy McNish saw an advertisement in the paper looking for men to go to, to Antarctica and you said, you might not return. <laughs> so, he went and seen about it and got it. In all, 5,000 men applied, from sailors to scientists. 27 were chosen. The 1914 Imperial Transantarctic Expedition aimed to cross the Antarctic continent for the first time. If this last great overland journey in the heroic age of discovery succeeded, its leader, Sir Ernest Shackleton, would fulfill his vision. I had a dream when I was 22 that someday I would go to the region of ice and snow and go on and on till I came to one of the poles of the earth. Twice before, he had set out to claim the South Pole, and twice he'd returned defeated. Shackleton had won a knighthood, but he'd still not gained the lasting glory he sought. Shackleton's new venture captured popular imagination. But there were critics. The First Lord of the Admiralty, Winston Churchill, dismissed the explorer as a mere adventurer. Enough life and money has been spent on this sterile quest, he thundered. The Pole has already been discovered. What is the use of another expedition? Nevertheless, in August 1914, after seven months of frantic fundraising and preparation, Shackleton and his crew of 27 men made to depart. But even as their ship Endurance set sail, a shock ran through the world in which he conceived his ambitious plan. War broke out. Shackleton offered ship and men as volunteers for Britain's war effort. The Admiralty declined in a single word cable. Proceed. The Endurance took its name from Shackleton's family motto, By Endurance We Conquer. The words summed up his own drive and resilience. 
he was determined not to repeat previous mistakes that had cost Britain the South Pole. This time, he brought 69 sled dogs, following the example of the Norwegians who had claimed the pole three years earlier. Shackleton now promised a more spectacular feat with potentially rich scientific rewards. A six-man sledging party would travel across the vast and inhospitable continent, charting its unknown regions. During the 1,500-mile journey, they would survive partly on supplies cached in advance. The endurance would approach Antarctica from the unknown and ice-laden waters of the Weddell Sea. Her last port of call was the island of South Georgia, with its whaling communities. A local priest romantically characterized the whalers as a motley race of former noblemen and other fallen creatures who now strip blubber or render oil. Many, if not most, are at odds with life. Beneath the surface, Shackleton had something in common with these loners and outsiders. Born in Ireland, Shackleton had married the daughter of a well-off English lawyer, but he was a neglectful husband and absent father. His restless spirit had always been happiest on his far-flung expeditions. He once confessed, Sometimes I think I'm no good at anything but being away in the wilds. Shackleton was not your nine-to-five man, your commuting type. He wanted to be a great man. He was, he was searching for greatness, for reputation. And in a sense, I think he would have stuck at nothing to achieve fame and fortune. In 1914, when Shackleton arrived at Gritviken, there were up to 300 men working the whaling station, and catchers were coming in with their catches, and they're saying there's a lot of ice around, and this appeared to them to be a reasonable bad year for ice. Uh, this was a bit of a warning to him, and they were prepared to wait a little bit for the ice to open up. For the whole of November, Shackleton and his crew waited. As spring drew on in the southern hemisphere, they hoped that the unusually heavy ice in the Weddell Sea would break up. Their Australian photographer, Frank Hurley, captured images of exotic wildlife for an eager audience back home. The advanced sale of film and photo rights had been crucial to financing the costly venture. Hurley also took the solid wall of mountains around the station. Occasionally he was assisted by a young Welsh sailor, Perse Blackborough. Blackborough had stowed away on the Endurance on the way south. Mrs Chippy, the popular tomcat belonging to the ship's carpenter, fell overboard on the outward journey. The ship turned about to pick the cat up. The crew seized the last opportunity to send letters home. Navigator Hubert Hudson wrote, Dear old Dad, just a line before we sail. We've had a very good time so far, and I think we shall do well. I hope to be home again within 19 months and go straight to the front. What a glorious age we live in. By early December, Shackleton could delay no longer. He had to take advantage of the Antarctic summer. He'd staked everything on the expedition. Twice before, he'd seen his dream shatter. He was now 40 years old. This would be his last chance. On December the 5th, 1914, the Endurance cast off and headed south. 